Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir my name is Shah Abbas at Imam Hussein TV in the holy lands of Karbala right across me we have Abu Fazl Abbas shrine and on my left hand side i have got uh, the master uh, Abba Abdullah al Imam al Hussein's shrine here itself this is 2017 and we are remembering the man who made his final stand 1400 years ago, the man who gave everything that he had for humanity, he gave everything he had to protect and safeguard this religion of Islam. Today, millions are inspired by his. Millions and millions have started their walk from the holy lands of Najaf to the holy lands of Karbala. It's about 80 kilometers walk. The Arbaeen walk is what it's called. Today joined with me is a guest, Malahat. So please introduce yourself. Tell me why, what has inspired you to carry out this walk from Najaf to Karbala? Assalamu alaikum. Um, Hussein has inspired me, Hussein ibn Ali Imam Hussein alayhi salam, has inspired me throughout the years and uh, I just felt that I needed to give back to him. Yep. And all that I have at this point is my time. Um, and, and I wanted to physically exert myself to come over here tired having spent those three days walking and then enter the haram and thank him for what he's done for all of us amazing so what is the principle why do we people walk what is the ideology what is the reason why the people walk the people walk because of what he did for us and we want to do what we can do for him you could hop on a flight and get here or grab a taxi or a bus but but then that the devotion and the love and the and that feeling of you know having given back does not come to you uh, you want to enter broken and tired and fatigued. Um, I thought personally it would be a breeze because I considered myself fit and I'll be okay, but we, got, we all got sick and it was humbling. And I think in reflection a blessing because, because we got to experience a little bit of what our, our mom experienced and what the ladies experienced. They were tired and broken down, not their spirit, but physically. And, and to be tired and broken down and sick and yet continue with your resolve to walk to Hussein um, was important for all of us, I think. Okay, I think the principle itself is walking from Rajah to Karbala. It can be looked in two things. Number one, you can look at it as like, just a walk, it's not a big deal. Or number two, you can look at it at a totally different angle since it is a big deal. It's a it statement is. is getting made. Mm -hmm. You're walking from Najaf, you're leaving your house with the intention that you're going to see Abba Abdullah all the way 80 kilometers later. Mm -hmm. You're going to be thirsty. You're going to be dehydrated. You're going to be tired. Mm -hmm. You're carrying some luggage with you. You will be exhausted. And most importantly, you will most likely be physically broken. Mm -hmm. What is it that gets you going and keeps you going that whole journey? Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And the ladies and their, and their entourage afterwards, what they went through. You want to experience what they went through. You want to show them that we would be willing to do it had we been there. When we say, Ya Laitani Kuntum Yeah. Uh, and you want to relive that memory, walk in their footsteps, walk in their shoes. Um, I think it's the ultimate expression of love. Absolutely. That we want to go through all of this misery because you all went through all this misery. And it's nothing compared to what they went through. It's nothing. Absolutely. I think love. We have to summarize this on love, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. The walk is personally what I think is, is a love for Abba Abdullah. And people say it's love. What is love? There are levels in love. One of the levels is you could be crazy about someone. You could, you could, you could pretty much, I think we went to a lecture mm -hmm. uh, of Amar Ashwani's lecture and he just talked about uh, uh, how crazy can you be for, for the love of Abba Abdullah mm -hmm. and, 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 and the family of Ahl Bayt. And you could be insanely in love mm -hmm. that people decide to walk the whole journey by themselves and absolutely not even stop at all, just run. Yeah. And, and the differences you see, I saw a young man, 10, maybe younger, leading his grandfather who was blind. Wow. I, you know, you see babes in their arms just lolling around sleeping. Uh, we, I saw a really old couple walking, holding hands. Mashallah. And it, it touched me to see them in love with Hussein, you know, together. And, uh, 
you know, to, to I think this to, is the crazy love, and then obviously the love it it, is. It's taken a step further. It's been it's been insanely in love that you forget your worldly affairs, you forget mm -hmm. the common denominators like the comfort, the family. You forget about about clean water. You forget about comfort. You forget mm -hmm. about your bed. You forget everything just to present you and and, and pledge your allegiance to mm -hmm. the Abba the Allah and says you're right I was not there 1400 years ago but guess what I am here today mm -hmm. I would like to make a stand alongside with you shoulder to shoulder and I would like to take myself from the whole dance of Najaf to Karbala mm -hmm. itself so my dear brothers and sisters if you have not experienced this walk please experience this walk uh, if you've done it this year go home and reflect ponder upon it find out what is it that you've learned why, why did you do that walk? What was your aims and what were principles? What was your reasonings behind it? Think about it. Once you've thought about it, see how you can implement your life, how you can change your life. There's a lot of blessings around. It's one of the, one of the lectures I was listening to uh, before I came on my trip. It says, every step that you take to Abba Abdullah, it's like the mercy is just on you and on mm -hmm. you. The angels protect you from the day you leave your house till your day you come back from the ziyarah and the, every step you take there's like apparently a thousand sins get forgiven yes, and also the, a thousand, the, the, the blessings. thousand blessings get added on and your status increases by a thousand percent uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful mm -hmm. that he wants to give you blessings he wants to find ways to give you blessings true. isn't it true and the spirit of giving that you see, I think that's also infused by Imam Hussain alayhi salam for both the Zuvar as well as those who come to serve, you know, the locals, how they drag their furniture on the roadsides, yeah. uh, you know, and begging you to sit on them and use it for a little while. How I've heard that they have a tradition where when they get married, they don't use any of their new uh, stuff until a Zuvar has used it. No way. Uh, I have heard that. Wow. Uh, so their dinner set, their furniture, everything, they keep it until Arbaeen time. And after Zuvar have used it is when they use it. Wow. Share me your experience. You've done this walk from Rajiv to Karbala yourself. Mm -hmm. Is this your first time? It is. It okay. is. So not the last. What, talk me down. How was the experience from the start? What were you expecting before you saw this walk? When you were in America, what were you thinking that you're going to see? I honestly cannot compare what I thought to what I actually saw. Um, I, I, of course, I, I knew that there'd be millions of people walking and you know it would be this spirit of brotherhood and camaraderie and giving. Yeah. Um, but to see it actually with my own eyes, and I, I did think it would be a breeze. I thought it would be very easy, but we all got sick the first day. And then having to walk through all of that was humbling, very humbling. You get to dissect yourself and break down yourself and find out who you really are. And perhaps subconsciously, not actively. Um, and what you stand for and what strengths you have and what weaknesses you have and work on them. Um, and to give to others, just give Amazing. as much as you can so to others. When you were walking, when you started the walk from what was your intention? What were you thinking? I was asking Bibi Zahra to allow me to just complete the walk because I was very Shana. sick at that time. And er earlier, every time I heard of more and more people get sick, um, I was praying for myself to get better and not perhaps for them. I was like, okay, walk away from them. I don't want to <laughs> share their germs. And I felt so guilty and so bad in the middle of my second day, I think. And I begged for forgiveness and I said, you know, how is it that I'm only washing off of my own good? And, you know, don't get sick, don't get worse. So I, you know. I think it's um, the people who have completed the walk. Um, I think you've done something that you never thought you're going to do no. physically and mentally and spiritually right people who have not done the walk I urge you to do it definitely definitely now people who made an intention to do the walk but couldn't do it because of your sickness so I have a message for you so Prophet Muhammad that was the story during Prophet Muhammad's time where a vessel currently Mm. So it's about this. This is the this is the craziest lover of <laughs> Prophet yes. Muhammad. So he find out that in one day that um, one his Prophet lost a teeth. Mm. He just said, "I think it's this teeth." No, I'm gonna break this one, and he broke it. And he keeps doing that pretty much most of the teeth. So this individual wanted to visit at the Prophet uh, Prophet Muhammad. So he spoke to his mother and says, "I I would like to go and visit this Prophet, Prophet of Islam." And his mother said, "No." But I'm going to only let you go for this certain period mm. of time. So this man says that's absolutely fine and he goes. He goes to visit the Prophet Muhammad and with the intention that I am going to see the Prophet. He goes, he stays, he waits, waits and waits and he knows he has a responsibility to mm. go back home because he made a promise to his mother. He could have certainly said, you know what, I'm going to wait till the Prophet comes because the Prophet was not there when he went to 
to visit the Prophet. He could have said, I can go home and leave my mother. Or I could go home, leave Prophet. Or he could have made a choice and said, I'm going to forget about my family and I'm going to wait for the Prophet. He could have. Yes or no? Right? But he chose the principles of Ahlul Bayt. Mm -hmm. He chose the principles of the teaching. His family have to be looked at. But he chose the value of his mother. And he said, I'm going to go back to my mother because my time finished. Mm -hmm. I have to go back. He goes back. Prophet Muhammad comes back and he smells the fragrance of this man. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you made that intention to walk from Najaf to Karbala, if you made an intention that I'm going to go to Karbala and walk, but you could not complete the walk itself, mm -hmm. don't be saddened. Don't be afraid. You can do it next year. Or to remember, your name has been registered and Imam Hussein is aware that you made that intention just like the way Prophet Muhammad was aware when this man came down. So Sister Malahat, I would like to say thank you very much for joining us on the show and thank you very much for sharing your experience uh, the humble experience and I hope and I do pray that you get home safe and and get well soon thank you very much for coming on show and stay tuned we're going to have another guest joining Khuda Afis thank you